In this spot on GPS fence review, I'm going to share my first hand experience with the spot on collar. I'm going to talk about everything from initializing the collar to setting up your first fence and of course evaluating it from the dog's perspective. Yep, that means I get to wear the collar and get shocked. A few times actually. Which also means I'll get to think about updating my resume. And please my fellow dog lovers, do not try this at home. I shouldn't even be doing it, but someone has to speak for the dogs and right now that's my job. The spot on GPS fence can be an outstanding choice for training your dog to stay on your property, keeping track of their location, and ultimately keeping them safe. But that's only true if you have a property that's larger than a half acre and you're willing to put in the time it takes to train your dog properly. If either one of those doesn't sound like you, then you're probably better off looking somewhere else, or at least holding off for a bit. We'll talk about that more in a few minutes. But if you do decide to choose the spot on GPS fence for your pup, make sure to use my link in the description of this video to automatically apply an exclusive discount for our viewers. Now let's get down to business and we'll start with setting up your spot on GPS collar. The first thing I did was plug the spot on collar in to get it charging. If you decide to use the contact points for static correction, you can go ahead and install them now. They're definitely not required and the static correction is turned off by default, but I'm going to be putting this collar to the test. So I installed the shorter contact points for short haired dogs like myself. Next I downloaded the spot on app. You can scan the QR code in the instruction manual and it will bring you right to it in either Apple Store or Google Play. Once you've installed the app, you'll be prompted to set up a profile for your dog. You'll upload a photo, select a color for their icon on the map, and type in their name. Then it asks for your collar's serial number, which you can either type in manually manually or simply scan the QR code on the back of your collar. Then you add your dog's breed, gender, and birth date. Next, the app prompts you to connect your cellular subscription plan, which is required to see your dog's location and get any notifications. Once activated, the app will search for your collar and connect to it over Bluetooth. Then you're good to go. This whole process only took me three minutes or so, and then it was time to set up my first fence. Setting up a virtual fence is really easy. Just tap create fence in the app and choose walk the perimeter, and then start walking your desired boundary holding the collar. Make sure to keep the GPS icon facing the sky as you walk. Alternatively, you can draw the fence manually if you'd like. Keep in mind that the spot on automatically builds in warning zones about 10 feet in from where you set the boundary and even the best GPS systems can drift throughout the day. Spot on says that their fence boundaries typically don't shift by more than 10 feet per day. As a result you'll want to set the boundaries a minimum of 15 feet away from any hazards like roads and any passageways that you make will need to be 30 feet or greater. Taking all this into account spot on recommends a minimum fence size of about a half an acre. Anything less than that doesn't really give your dog enough room to run around free. Once you've finished creating your fence and saved it you can adjust the size and shape by clicking and dragging on fence posts as necessary in the app. You can create several different fences if you'd like, and then simply choose the one you want and upload it to the collar when it comes time to use it. With your fence set up, now it's time to test it. How it works is that about 10 feet away from the boundary you set, the collar will start emitting an alert tone. This kind of sounds like alternating beeps. Then as you get within 5 feet of the boundary you set, it'll switch over to a warning tone, which is a solid beep and a little bit louder than the alert tone. Once the collar reaches the boundary, it'll start vibrating and apply the static correction if you choose to use it. You can verify that the static correction is working without shocking yourself by using the included static content tester. It'll light up when the color applies a shock. Since I'm going to be trying out this color myself, I'll go ahead and turn on the static correction in the settings. So now for the fun part. Let's see what it's like as a dog to approach the boundary here. Okay, so I'm at the first beep. And then as you get closer, you get that secondary beep, more of an audible tone. All right, now I'm going to keep crossing. Okay, so that's not so bad. Yeah, I mean, I can definitely feel it. It's definitely buzzing me and obviously I'm not taking it off um, but you know it's noteworthy uh, I can feel it so that's setting one it feels like static almost like if you were to be licking a nine volt battery which I don't recommend you do and by the way don't try any of this at home absolutely I feel like I need to say that for you know some sort of legal reasons or whatever um, but anyway let's go ahead and try turning up the static correction just a little bit I don't want to go too crazy here but we'll see how it goes so now I've got the static correction up to level five here and uh, yeah definitely don't try this at home Let, let's go ahead and see what it feels like at level five so I'm approaching the boundary and there's my first beep so I should know by now time to turn around but I'm gonna keep walking, bad dog. And it's got the second beep. All right, let's see what happens here. Okay, yep, that one hurts a little bit more. Ow! <laughs> Okie dokie. I could go a little higher than that, but I'm, I'm really not sure I wanted to be honest. So yeah, I mean, five's definitely a pretty strong shock. I doubt I'll have any red marks or anything like that, but can certainly feel it. Keep that in mind when you start cranking up the power on the, uh, the static correction if you do choose to use it. And of course, it's always better if you choose not to, I, I believe. And I'm sure I'm not alone on that. But you know what, just for the, the sake of the video, since we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it up to 10. And I have made myself a little friend here. All right, so here we are with the uh, static correction set at level 10, which is probably too high, I'm going to say, because five definitely gave me the point, and we'll see what happens here. So that's the first beep right there. Second beep. Ah, oh, yep, that, okay, yep. 
That's definitely pretty f***ing strong there. I would say you don't need to go that high. Look what it did to my neck. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you might not see that with your dog's hair over their neck, so uh, keep that in mind, but, but it certainly got me good. That was only, you know, one time at static correction level one, one time at static correction level five, and one time at static correction level 10. So do keep that in mind if you're using the static correction for your dog here. It's, uh, you know, definitely not a pleasant experience. And uh, just because their fur is hiding it doesn't mean it's not there. So clearly the static correction can be quite painful. The collar allows you to set it as high as 30, but a setting of 10 was more than enough for me to get the point. You really want to train your dog to understand how the boundaries work and ideally only use vibration in the worst case, no static correction at all. Between the audible alerts and warnings, they should be able to understand when they're near the boundary without the need for any correction. Spot on offers tons of resources for training your dog, and they say it typically takes about 15 minutes a day for one to two weeks for the average dog to get up and running with a spot on fence. If your dog takes a little bit longer than this, then don't worry. With a little bit of consistency and your support, your dog will get there. Spot on even offers a remote training session with an expert trainer if you need a bit of assistance. I don't want to bore you with too many technical details here, but suffice to say that the technology in the spot on collar is astounding. The spot on is truly the high end in the world of GPS dog fencing. And of course it comes with a high end price tag. Remember to use my link in the description of this video to apply an exclusive discount for our viewers if you do decide to choose the spot on for your pup. If you have over a half an acre and you're willing to put in the time it takes to train your dog properly, then there is no more well-designed GPS dog fence out there than the spot on.